LaVisca. Runs off the left side. Here he goes. Hasta La Visca, baby. On his way to the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Colorado. A 49-yard run by LaVisca Chanel. Well, the Buffaloes did have the lead early in a 49-yard touchdown run by LaVisca Chanel, but they end up falling 31-20. Lose for the 13th consecutive time to Southern Cal as they fall here at the Coliseum. Coach Gary Barnett, voice of the off Mark Johnson. A disappointing ball game for the Buffaloes. They fall to 5-1 and one of the season. Well, I think the most disappointing thing, Mark, was that we started this football game doing the things that we needed to do to give ourselves a chance to win on the road against a good football team in a hostile environment. And we couldn't we couldn't put points on the board as a result. We got two quick interceptions. We had a penalty on one of their special teams plays that backed them up to the five yard line. So we had three great series opportunities uh, on offense that we couldn't do anything with. The first two series for us started with negative yardage plays. In fact, at one point in time, uh, out of 61 plays, 43% of them were negative, yeah. negative yardage plays. You can't win like that. And we just couldn't capitalize on the on the things that we were able to do early on anyway defensively. Buffaloes did get those two interceptions, one by Drew Lewis, in fact, on the first snap offensively for USC, the ball game. The other one by Evan Worthing. Finally, somebody in the secondary has got an interception. Safe to say defensively, the buffs on the, in the secondary really let down this team tonight. The secondary struggle is no question, but they eventually found out where our weakness was tonight and took advantage of it. But early on, we had their number. They, I mean, at, at halftime, they had no yards rushing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really had virtually shut them down. We held them, the whole game, we held them under their average. But, you know, it didn't make any difference. The other side of the ball's got to play, too. And, and we didn't come to play a, on offense. Yeah, the Bubble has uh, had their issues. Some big plays given up. In fact, Michael Pittman had a monster first half, 144 yards receiving. And you kind of saw that coming before the ball game, didn't you? Well, you know, he's hurt us in the past so much. And uh, when I saw the only had 11 catches. I thought this is a the guy they're going to use against us because he's 6'4 and he's just, he is a mismatch for us. Always a lot of alums here in Los Angeles when the Buffaloes play in town as they fall to USC. One of them, George Frazier, was here at the ball game tonight. Oh, I'm very proud of this team. Knowing a lot of guys out here, seeing them just have fun and doing what they love to do, it means a lot to me. Yeah, definitely a buff for life, but I mean, I miss being on the team a lot. I just having the camaraderie, you know, hanging out with these guys every day, going to practice with them, working with them, going through all the, the thick and thin. You miss that definitely, but I mean, I, I'm glad I went through everything I did. I mean, it's pretty cool, you know what I mean? Just kind of being able to sit back and just talk to the guys you've been hanging out with for the last couple of years and just watching them blow up and excel and, and honestly see how much more they could do. I'm excited to see what they're going to do this year. I mean, I'm very very proud just uh, knowing when I came here and talking to Coach Mack and telling him all, the all my goals and what I've seen in Colorado being in the future. I came here and did my time and kind of helped bring guys along the way that I felt that this team should go. It means a lot. And just seeing them being very, very successful, it means a lot. I can't I can't wait to see what they do at the end of the season. Just, just being a Buffalo means everything. Wearing that black and gold, I believe black and gold now. Uh, but going to Colorado is the best decision I ever made in my life. Just knowing that uh, Colorado is a part of me and knowing that CU is who I am, and it means the world to me. Uh, good to see George Frazier here at the ballgame. Buffalo's fall, though, for the first time in 2018, five and one of the season, two and one in Pac-12 conference play. 31 20 as they fall to Southern Cal offensively. Help us understand what went wrong. The Buffs could never quite find any rhythm there. Well, we couldn't find a rhythm because we, one, when we tried to run the ball, we ran it negatively. I mean, we had so many negative yardage plays in that game, Mark, that we're all of a sudden now we're in second and 15s. You can't win. You can't live that way. And, and that happened to us. We had third and 15s. And, you know, when you start off in a hole, it's just hard against a good team to overcome that. We had a couple of injuries. We lost uh, LaVisca during the game. We lost Jay McIntyre during the game. That hurts a little bit. But in the end, our ineffectiveness at running the ball positively or getting positive yardage plays, especially on first down, uh, co completely did us in. Yeah. We could not get the ball down the field. I think at one point in time, going into the fourth quarter, 13-yard pass was our longest pass. Yep. By the way, Jay McIntyre, LaVisca Chanel, Trayvon McMillan got dinged up with a thigh injury. Jace Frankie was out with a knee injury uh, as well. All right. Now the Buffs got to move forward. It's just one game. You don't want this game to affect you. Moving yeah. ahead. Very tough road trip next week. Absolutely. And we're, we're analyzing this game. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, next week, we we got another game, and we, we got we to gotta have a little better plan. We got to 
execute better. We got to be able to move the football. It's all got to be better than it was this week. And uh, you know, uh, I think everybody was a little bit concerned that are we as good as a five and zero team? Well, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't make any difference. We're five and we're five and one now, and now we got to go play against Washington, which is a really good football team, a, a better football team than what we just played, and we got to play better. Yeah, you know, with a young football team as well. This is a learning experience for this team about what it takes to play at this level, right? Well, absolutely, yeah. it, it really is. But you got enough veterans on this team that that they should lead you into Washington. And uh, uh, this team likes to play football, and they like each other. And so I, I think they'll come together. Well, that's one thing for us to watch, though, is the injuries. How is that going to affect Colorado moving forward? Is they got a very tough road trip in Seattle against a top 15 team in the Washington Huskies. Coming up next, he had a sack against USC. We stop at Johnson's. Continue to play good football. He'll join us next here in the Stampede. Here they come on third down and 16. Daniels out of a collapsing pocket will go down. It was Mustafa Johnson, the sophomore from Turlock, California, having a huge season in his first year with the Bucs. That was a big defensive play by Mustafa Johnson in a 31-20 loss to Southern Cal back at the Stampede. Voice of the boss, Mark Johnson. First loss of the season for Colorado, ranked number 25 in the coaches poll after that 31-20 loss to USC. All right, how do the Buffs respond after dropping the first game of the season? Uh, after dropping the first game of the season, we're not going to quit. We're going to basically all we have to do is bounce back. We're going to stick to what we know, stick to our keys. We had a lot of um, mental errors, mixed and breakdowns with technique wise. Uh -huh. But overall, we would say we had a good game still. Yeah. Um, they capitalized on more opportunities than we did. And I think that's what was the key and factor in us losing. But I definitely think that. We have a strong mental team, so we'll be ready to play next week. You know, Mustafa, we know this. Every college football game comes down to just a play or an opportunity mm -hmm. that's either mm -hmm. taken advantage of or not yeah. taken advantage of. Here Definitely. you guys get the pick early. You force two consecutive punts, get another pick, and don't get any points out of that. Right. And you kind of know and we're missing opportunities here, don't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, we know that it's missing opportunities, but uh, going into the game, we knew we were going to go against a good team, very talented team, yeah. and it came out to be a defensive battle. So that's really what it came down to. And they were able to get points on the board early, but it ended how it ended. How did you guys feel? Because at halftime, by the way, USC, which has traditionally been a great running team, had zero rushing yards. You hold them about 45, 47 yards rushing. How did you guys feel you played up in the defensive front? Oh, in the front seven, well, we feel we did great. Um, looking at film, we did have a lot of errors, but we, uh, I think that comes with our bond as a team that when I would mess up, I knew one of the backers, Nate Landman, Rick Gambo or Drew would be there to basically help me and fix what I messed up on. Right. Or vice versa, if they missed the gap, I'm there to help make a play. Yeah. When you play in a marquee situation like this in L.A. Uh, at the Coliseum, you kind of relish that? You kind of enjoy that, that yeah. atmosphere? Me personally, I love the pressure. I love listening to the fans hoot and holler, <laughs> try to put me down. It only builds me. I really do love that feeling. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Buffs, though, do fall to fall. 5-1 of the season, 2-1 and one in the Pac-12. Senior Kyle Evans running back for the Buffaloes. He had a touchdown against USC. And we caught up with him after the game. Yeah, I mean, we just really didn't capitalize when our defense was turning over the ball. So um, we just tried to pick it up in the second half. And we fought the whole second half the rest of the game. But we couldn't get it done. Our goal is still to get a Pac-12 championship. So that's what we're aiming towards. And uh, just coming in on Monday, getting ready, and uh, trying to beat Washington. Like Coach Chev and all the other coaches say, one snap and clear. They usually do that for the plays. But right now, it's really just for this game. So we got to just come back together, regroup, and uh, find ourselves and, and execute come next Saturday. You know, the hard-fought game, we knew that going in. They have great players, we have great players. It's just gonna be whoever was willing to do it to the end, and we couldn't necessarily get it done. So hopefully, you know, the guys that are a little banged up can get some treatment and uh, regroup and be ready to go next Saturday. That's Kyle Evans after the ball game. Buffs in a 31-20 loss to USC, now number 25 in the coaches' poll. We continue with Mustafa Johnson here for the Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, we're going to have Josh Kaiser coming up next year on the program. You get to go against that offensive line all the time in practice. Yeah. That group seems to be coming along pretty well. Kind of give us an analysis of what you see from those guys. Uh, I know that they're fighters. They have a lot of grit. I know that when it comes down to getting in the hole and pulling someone out, I, I trust in them that they're going to pick them up and put them down and move their feet and yeah. get someone out the way. There's some talented young fellas yeah. across the line. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Josh, one of the older guys, but you mm -hmm. got some talented young guys you're facing. Oh, yeah, definitely. We, ha um, we have a lot of talent right now as of age, and then we have some young guys coming in that have had, like um, Frank, I saw he got in the game a little bit and was able to make a difference. I saw him make a lot of good blocks in there. And we do have a lot of talent coming up, so I'm not worried about that. I had a tough situation in that ball game at USC. Jace Frankie, one of your veteran leaders yeah. in that defensive front, gets an injury done yeah. for the season. That's a tough break for him. Yeah, no, it is very tough, but um, during the heat of the battle, there's really nothing that we can do about that. We just yeah. have to keep playing and worry about it after the game. 
Um, Jace Frankie was definitely a motivator on the sideline. He realized what had happened to him, but he knew that he can't give up on us. So he sat there, talked to us, motivated us, and did what he knew how to do with what he could do. All right, big opportunity this week now. Colorado on the road against the top 20 team yeah. up in Seattle against Washington. Yeah. How do you kind of view this game? <laughs> we view it almost like every other game. We know it's going to be a hard challenge. It's going to be like USC, a hard-fought battle. It's going to come down to who capitalizes on all the plays, who does their technique, and who, is, who does their assignment better than it, the other team. You know, as a great alliance says, adversity doesn't create character. It exposes character. I know it's only been a day of practice as you and I are sitting here. How do you think this team reacts? Is this you know, kind of wants to come back with a chip on its shoulder? Oh, yeah. We definitely have a chip on our shoulder. And looking at the uh, energy and um, tenacity of the team, we came back unfazed. We know that it was a hard loss, but we came out here, got our practice done. We went very hard. It was a walkthrough, but we still were having a lot of intensity. All right. I like it. Keep up the good work this season. All right. Thank you. All right. Defensive tackle. Mustafa Johnson joining us here on the Bubble Stampede. We're going to flip to the other side with the big fellas. Josh Kaiser for the offensive line joins us next. Colorado sweeps Oregon State in Boulder, the third conference win for the Buffaloes, the first by sweep. The other two wins were five setters, nail biters. What did you think today? You guys came out of the gates pretty hot in set one. That third set, it's probably a good thing there weren't any more sets because Oregon State was building momentum. What was your observation on the court throughout the course, the ebb and flow of the match today? Yeah, um, I think obviously the first two sets we played a lot better than we did in the third. Jesse always emphasizes what we're doing on our side, limiting errors and everything. And I think in that last set, we kind of had a few more errors than we should have. So that's why it was more close, but we ended up winning, so end up good. A nice victory for the CU volleyball team there, Alexis Smith. You a volleyball player? Uh, Looking at the body type, I'm not sure you're a volleyball Never body got type. into it. No, never got into it. But uh, I think I might be able to play a little bit. I think you probably could. Nice yeah. win, though, for the yeah, Buffs. They nice knock, up, knock off the Beavers. All right, football team coming off a 31-20 loss uh, at USC. First loss of the season. Mm -hmm. How do you guys respond to that? Uh, we just got to come out this week and uh, prepare uh, to go 1-0 this week. Uh, USC is a very good football team. They, they played their hearts out. And uh, at the end of the day, we didn't get it done. But we have to come out this week and prepare for Washington the best that we can do. You know, neither team ran the ball very well in, in that ball game. Mm -hmm. uh, as you guys looked at tape from an offensive line standpoint, how'd you grade yourself? Uh, you know, there is a lot to improve on. As yeah. always, in games that we win and games that we lose, we, mm -hmm. I mean, we grade ourselves tough. Yeah. So, you know, it didn't grade out the way we wanted it, but I just say at the end of the day, we got a lot to improve on. Yeah. Uh, being a senior yourself, do you kind of look at yourself as a leader in that old line, kind of helping some of those young fellows? Able to yeah, definitely, in? especially with uh, Frank Phillip yeah. coming in. And he, he's done a great job. And uh, it's, just, it's, it's nice to see and it's fun to see uh, guys that you go along with um, and you help. They're, they're prospering and doing well in the football field. And having a guy like Colby Purcell, who's in that center position, is going to make all the calls. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A young fellow in there as well. Yeah. He's doing Col nice job. Colby's travel. doing really well. Yeah. Uh, he, um, he started a little slow this season, but he, he's come along very well. He, he's getting uh, play calls out uh, in great timing. And uh, he's, uh, you know, he, he's running the show for us. He's doing a lot of good things for us. You know, we have Mustafa Johnson on the show here. We were mm -hmm. talking before we went back on the air about big man problems. Only big guys on the mm -hmm. show today. It's not See, easy being big, is it? it? It's not. And I think a lot yeah. of people need to know about, like, what the <laughs> what kind of stuff we have to go through, you know? You know, you, you can't uh, fit in, in a, a seat in an airplane, mm -hmm. right? Shoulders too wide. Right? You know, yeah. down a practice field, they've got porta potties, tough rusting, and things <laughs> like that. It's not easy being as big as you and I are. No, no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> you know what? Nobody watching feels bad for either of us at all. Mm -hmm. no, no use complaining about it. Mm -hmm. Hey, that guy that's not a terribly big guy, but he makes big guys is Steve Engelhardt. He's the strength coach, had been with football. Now he's with the men's basketball team. We caught up with him as the Buffs get ready for their next season. This don't wake you up, Louie? You're crazy. Since 5 o'clock, I got 5,000 steps already. Most people still still sleeping, dreaming of being great. We are being great. What's you listening to wake you up this morning? Better. See, man, you need to see. Y'all got big on me, bro. I thought y'all little big guys, man. We're gonna pin it down. They had to move this up 10 times for me. This roll is about 120 pounds of pure American steel. You go get a video of his face, he'd be grimacing. I don't grimace. <laughs> there you go. I taught him well. His freshman year, he would have been crying. Every time he hits that soleus, I know he's in pain, but it feels good. Go see if their vitamins are set up. Yo, Ben, mark it down. B12, multivitamin today. More than just right programs, get their bodies right. We even hook up vitamins for these kids. Go ahead, man, just chug it, I don't care. Don't forget to drink that. 
You gotta be 210 in a month or I lose. I don't lose. Is his smoothies better than mine from the summer? What's wrong with the hell yeah? What's wrong with the Orange Jubilee? Put Gatorade with some protein. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap for this section. I'll see y'all in about 30 minutes. Just me and you now, baby. Let's go. Midcourt. Let's get you a little loose. Let's go. Let's go, big dog. Let's go. Quad walk. Coming back. Monster crawl to reach. Coming back. Monster crawl to reach. Yeah, yeah. Get that arm up. Get that arm up. Now Steve Engelhardt getting the men's basketball team. Steve was working with football when you got here, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. But yeah, Steve is a, a great, great coach. Uh, he, he brings a lot of energy to the weight room. Yeah. And uh, he, he's great to be around. And he's about as big as that arm right there. Yeah, he's a, he's a, little, <laughs> a little short. He's a little but, short. But he's a tough, tough guy. Uh, Buffalo's got a big challenge coming up this weekend in Seattle to take on Washington, one of the better teams uh, in America. The Buffs yeah. are one of the better teams in America. Mm -hmm. How do you guys view this, this matchup? Uh, you know, it, at the end of the day, we, we got to go out and compete. They're, they're a good football team. We're a good football team. It, it's it's not going to be a blowout. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it, it's going to come down to the wire, similar to the way uh, Oregon played them. And they're, they're coming off a tough road loss, just like we are. And I, I fully expect them to come out and give us a show. Yeah, it, so, it, you guys have a little bit of chip on your shoulder now? I mean, well, so, oh, yeah. so would they. They just lost yeah. to Oregon, in fact. So yeah. both teams got something to prove this weekend. Yeah, we, we definitely have a lot to prove. They have a lot to prove. And, uh, you know, this is a really important to us uh, looking at our standings because I know we all want to go to Pac-12 South yeah. or Pac-12 Championship. So this is a very important game as of the rest of our games. It, you know, I think that's the thing to think about here a little bit. The Buffs are halfway through the schedule at five and one, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's still a lot of football left to play down yes, the stretch sir. of the season. Yeah. yeah, well, that question. Well, good luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, Josh Kaiser, head of Colorado Buffaloes, will be in Seattle to take on Washington on Saturday. We're going to take a timeout when we come back here in the Stampede. We're talking soccer for the undefeated CU women's soccer team. Taylor Korniak joins us. and scores. Buffalo's goal, second of the match for Taylor Korniak. Couple of PK goals by uh, this woman right here, Taylor Korniak. Buffalo's remain undefeated. By the way, first time since 2002, a Buffs player has two penalty kick goals. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> the Buffs are doing fantastic right now. Yeah, That's kind of are. a unique situation having two PKs like that. Yeah, it is pretty unique. I've never in my soccer career had two PKs in one game. <laughs> yeah. This team right now, 12-0-3. Unbeaten, ranked in the top 25. You guys are playing fantastic soccer. Yeah, we are. We got a lot of new players this year, and the mm -hmm. freshmen are doing really good you know, coming in. So uh, I feel like we're scoring a lot of goals, and it's just working out for us. <laughs> when a season unfolds like this, does pressure rise? Do you get more relaxed because you're playing so well? How does it unfold? I think pressure definitely rises. Uh, we have Cal and Stanford, and Stanford's the number one team in the country, so I feel like yeah. the pressure's more on them. But. Cal is definitely what our minds are set on right now, and hopefully we get another win and keep the streak going. When does a team get to the point where they think to themselves, you know what, we're one of those teams that everyone's looking at saying we're a great team? I feel like we're in that position right now. I mean, we're 12-0-3, yeah. so I just think we got to keep playing our game and be confident and just go in thinking that every game is the most important game. So. Right. Uh, Taylor Korniak, by the way, becoming one of the best players in Colorado history, number five in goals, number four in points here at the University of Colorado. When we start talking about you kind of being in that kind of rarefied air, what does that mean to you? It means the world to me, actually. Yeah. I didn't realize I was fifth, so <laughs> it was a pretty shock to me, but uh, it's really it's really surprising. I'm just happy to make as many contributions as I can. You know, I, I think, too, when you're in the middle of something like that, you don't really think about it. Maybe when it's all said and done, you look back and go, wow, <laughs> look yeah. at that. I was one of the best that ever played there. How about that? <laughs> Is that kind of the truth? Yeah, I mean, I'm already a junior, so right. time's flying. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you really don't appreciate what's happening in the middle of it, do you? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, but. I would think so. Now the Buffaloes have got a big weekend. We'll talk more about that here in just a moment. I know the snow is flying and everything's freezing, but we are talking women's golf. Ann Kelly and her team are getting ready. They've got some new golfers on campus. We have played two tournaments, one in New Mexico and one in Chicago, Northwestern's tournament. Bit of a slow start. Um, we've had Robin Choi's playing really well, and. Some others have shot some really good rounds. Jillian Vance is playing well. We just need to get everybody going. Um, so it's okay, slow start for a fast, fast finish. You know, losing Brittany was a big loss because she was not only a great player, but a team leader. But we have some younger players that are really stepping up. Ellie Otten is a, is a good example. She's worked really hard and working her way into the lineup. Um, our freshman Malik is coming along and just has to get 
get her feet under and get used to college and she's going to be fine. So I think we have a very good team this year. Um, it may take us the fall semester to kind of get things going, but we should have, we should have a really strong spring. Starting the 19th of October, we go really strong. We're at Texas's tournament, come home, they're in school for a few days, then we head out to SMU's tournament in Dallas, then home for a few days, and then off to Hawaii for the Pac-12 preview. So we have three back-to-back -back tournaments. It's going to be a busy, busy finish to the fall. I think the goal for the rest of this fall is just to get a little more consistency, get rid of um, a lot of the mental mistakes we're making, and give people experience. And then I think uh, we'll have a good idea of where we stand and what we need to work on and get ready for the spring. Yeah, believe it or not, you can't tell by the weather outside, but it is golf season for Ann Kelly and her golf team. And it's also soccer season. And Taylor Korniak and the Buffalo is playing very well right now. Mm -hmm. Talking about how well this team is playing. Who else is playing well for the Bucs? Um, I think Jorian Bauckham mm -hmm. is playing extremely well. She's leading our goals right now. And I think Tatum Barton is another impact on the team. Um, there are two starting forwards, by the way, but I, I definitely think that we're connecting well on the field, and it's definitely showing because we're 12 on 3 but um, we're definitely playing really well and connecting and making runs, and it's just working out for us right now. I'd have to think as well defensively. Yeah. Uh, you guys are playing fantastic yeah. right now. I mean, every, every score is a, either a, a blanking or a 4-1 you know, to one game like it was against the Ducks. Yeah, um, our whole back line, believe it or not, three out of the four are freshmen, so mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like a pretty big shock to other teams, but... Um, they're playing extremely well. They're playing like they're veterans, so I'm really proud of them. How about this road trip now? You've got a big road trip coming up, going to the Bay Area. You've got Cal and then Stanford, Stanford number one of the country. Talk a little bit about that trip. Yeah, I think uh, Cal is our number one focus right now because we play them on Thursday, so I'm really excited for that one. But Stanford is number one in the country, so... I mean, we just got to play our best and hopefully get a result out of that one. <laughs> you know, that, that's the thing about being in the Pac-12, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. as good as any conference in America. Yeah. And every single game, you're playing one of the top teams in America. Yeah, like Stanford, UCLA, USC, like all the top three. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just insane. Yeah, and that, that should be, I would think, by the time you get to the postseason, you've been tested. You're, you're postseason yeah. ready because every time you go out and play against somebody, it's like an NCAA tournament yeah. game. Yeah, for sure. It's it's insane. Like, I just feel like coming in, Washington State was one of our biggest games, and we ended up doing really well against them and right. getting a result out of that. So I just think it's really going to help us in the uh, right. postseason. That's Junior Taylor Corny. Actually, the Buffaloes are on the road in the Bay Area against Cal and number one stand for this weekend, continuing a great season. As we put a wrap on this week's Buffalo Stampede, we'll talk to you next time.